Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. We are live from an undisclosed location in Brooklyn, New York, and we have a special guest. I don't know how we got him. It's so tough to get people now because of COVID. Can't get anything. Go to Williams Sonoma. You try to get a pan. They don't have it in the store. You got to order it online. Can't get any furniture. Can't get any clothing. Everything's backed up because of COVID. The same thing with podcast guests. They're very, very tough to get right now. But we have pulled every string. I, I went to my people at CAA. I went to everybody. I l went to every connection I knew. I twisted every arm. I greased every palm. And finally, finally... Uh, it, it, it came through. Uh, we're very excited to have this man on the show, uh, Ray Kump. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> it was a process. Yeah. This was no, a it, look, I mean, when I, when I found out from my agent that you wanted to be on the show, um, it took a moment to register. Oh, right. And yeah, I've, look, we're old friends, so why not? Yeah. I have look, a lot going on, but we're old friends. <laughs> we're old friends. <laughs> So listen to this. You get, my agent calls me today. He goes like this. Listen to this, right? Yeah. Anybody who's not in this business, and by the way, if you're not good, <laughs> don't be. and Don't try to get into it. But uh, anyone who's not in the business isn't familiar with how, in many, not in all cases, but in many cases, agents in Matt, they're just becoming useless. So they don't really call you anymore with like, you know, you, like actionable intelligence. You know, they always say like things that can actually help your career. Yeah. They call you with things that they disguise as opportunities. So listen to this. My agent calls me a few hours ago and goes like this. He goes, hey, man, how are you? He's like, I got Ryan on the phone, too. Some other guy. He's like, it's me and Ryan on the phone. Now, I just auditioned for Curb. I thought like they were telling me I got Curb. But I was like, oh, great. I'm so excited, you know. Like, I got Ryan on the phone. They're like, all right, so we just want to go through a couple opportunities, if that's okay with you. I'm like, oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm in. Let's do it. I'm ready. I love the show, you know. And he goes, so the other day uh, we were talking, uh, apparently Lakeith Stanfeld has seen you on Rogan, and he thinks you're really funny. Now, uh, there's, there's probably nothing really to do. But maybe you want to write something with that in mind. Am I supposed I'm like, to know who that is? He, he's the guy from what, Ben? Get out. Sorry to bother you. He's oh, a, okay. He's, he's, a, a, he's, a, he's an established guy. Okay, cool. But they go like this. They go, maybe you want to write something with that in mind. I'm like, you want me to write a buddy cop film for <laughs> me and Lakeith Stanfeld? I'm like, <laughs> what are you saying here? So he's a fan. Is, is he a fan of the show? I, I don't, he just saw me on Rogan and thought I was funny. It's right. like. Dude, that's so, so. That's millions of people. This is like the friend who's like, you know, you, uh, you go past a girl, you, you want the girl you pet in high school, and she's like, thanks. And then your other friend, when you walked away, goes like, you should try to fuck her. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's exactly right. Then they go like this. They go, and there's a guy at Danny McBride's company, not Danny McBride. Right. There's a guy at Danny McBride's company who works in the documentary division who's also a fan of you, and he said to us, I don't think there's anything to do right now with him, but we really like him. And I go, what is, and they go, so we just want to like set some time next week to go over some more of these opportunities. Well, I'm I, like, they're not opportunities. I want you to understand something, Tim. Uh, this is one of those moments when you have to, iron's hot, you got to strike, okay? <laughs> there's, no, there's no time to wiggle waggle about this. Tom Hanks. <laughs> His janitor <laughs> signed, signed up for your Patreon. Yeah, that's literally what it is. It's like these are not opportunities at all. They have nothing to do. It, it, look, I, I, I've never understood uh, that side of the business, and yeah. they've never understood me. Uh, it's right. mutual. Yeah. But uh, it, look. It's like calling me and going, listen, so Sharon Stone is drinking heavily. She's into QAnon and thinks you're great. We don't know what, if there's anything there yet, but we just think we should explore it later on. It's like... This is, this is like saying, <laughs> look, look, all right, well, I want to hear, hear something. Um, Kevin Spacey has just lost custody of his children. <laughs> this is a big opportunity. <laughs> Like this, this is people spiraling. It's not. It's an opportunity. It's people who's on the career down, and you're seeing you on the way down. It's 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 one of our favorite phrases. Really, it's less than nothing. Right. You know what I mean? It's absolutely to call someone and just say, "Hey, somebody famous thinks you're funny." I'm like, a lot of people do. Who cares? <laughs> Unless there's something to be done. That was like eight years ago when you got excited about that. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I'm like, dude, I got bills to pay. I want to. There's things I want to do that requires money, like creatively. It's like, it would be one thing if they were like, hey, 
uh, you know, they've got a real great idea. Why don't you hear them out? Or they think you could be plugged into something or there's something going on. But to just say, hey, they saw you on Rogan and they think you're funny and they want to. And I think they said, like, Keith Sanford wants to talk to me, which I'm like, great. Right. Like, I'm like, I'll talk to anyone. Right. That's what I do. I think it would be so funny if, like, I sit down with him and he's like, hey, man, why do you put Candace Owens on the show? I'm like, oh, this is, this is what we had to get CAA involved. Just tweet at me like everyone else to go fuck myself. Oh, it would be funny if he was like, I think Candace had a lot of great ideas. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I can't say that. Yeah. Usually. He's like, I want to thank you for exposing me to Candace Owens, who I now love. Um. So it, it just, we're at a point now where it's like the level of insanity, you get to the point. I was kind of a dick to them on the phone. Right. They were like, we want to set a time to talk about some opportunities. And I said, if we have real opportunities and not like some crazy idea, like some crazy, like non-specific, hey, why don't you write a pilot for you and Lakeith Stanfeld, right. you know, on spec. It's like, yeah, guys, if there's real opportunities, let's discuss because it. Because the reality is, it's like, you don't start writing the pilot. You, I, this is what you, I, we want from your thing until like, the money's changed hands. The whole thing is that this is, it, in lieu of, there's just no good news, right. which is fine, right? Because there hasn't been any in years. Just call with that. Like, I'd respect that. Just call and go, so you didn't, so the, the, a role I auditioned for in Curb was like a plumber. They go, they're going another way. They're going another way on that. I'm like, of course they are. Also, I don't know if a casting director is going to look at my Twitter and go, yeah, this guy was on a podcast with Alex Jones. Yeah, Candace Owens on. We don't want to, we don't need that smoke. <laughs> we don't need that heat. Who needs that smoke? What is, there's no other fat guy to play a plumber? <laughs> we got to get this guy? For what? You know, so I don't know. I just have no, I would respect that if they were like, listen, there's just nothing going on. Instead it's just of, like when I used to work retail and selling cameras and, be, and like when it was slow, the boss would be like, oh, here's what you want. I want you to go through all the old sales. So Bill, you sold cameras to a couple of years ago and try to sell them another camera. And it's, it's just such a crazy idea because I know sales and I know that like when you have somebody that has a mortgage, it's like maybe the mortgage is going to like adjust or right. maybe circumstances have changed. It's such a, nothing could be a colder sale right. than calling a guy that bought a camera three years ago, yeah. you know? You're like, hey, how's that? How's that doing? How's that Nikon doing? Did that thing I sold you break yet? <laughs> How are you feeling? You, you want to re-up? <laughs> Why don't you come down to the store? We got some new models. <laughs> How's that Canon treating you? Good? It's just Look, so I, let, me, let me be honest with you. I got a Coke problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be real honest with you. <laughs> I need $70, which is the commission on this $8,000 camera that I sell you. I will make $70 and I need it or I'm going to get my head busted in when I walk out of here. So please come down here and look at these cameras. <laughs> it's so crazy. And it's like, these agents are all usually rich kids because who right. would ever get into the business of selling clowns? No one that needed money. There's no like. What's well, the kind of thing also uh, where like it's one of those jobs where you could be float like you need someone to float you for a while because they don't make money the first few years. No, they're stuff. they're like uh, you know they work on somebody's desk and yeah. they, you know their parents are just happy they're not you know like you know in jail so they're like usually it's the black sheep mm -hmm. of a wealthier family where it's like my brother it was at Johns Hopkins Medical Center you know my sister works at a big ad agency my other brother works at Goldman and I work at. WME because right. I, I, you know, obviously I'm not going to be a tour guide like Tim Dillon. <laughs> My aunt, by the way, sent, she's sending me like little presents, which is nice. Aunt Donna. Yeah. She sends me a, a, a present for my Christmas tree. And it was the, the Greyhound tour bus from New York City, and it just kind of rubbed me a weird way. Yeah, like, <laughs> like it, She's trying to take the piss a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's almost like... Don't no matter, forget who you are. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what it <laughs> felt like. That's what it felt like, it was just a double-decker bus. Like, basically... When I think of you, I don't think of a Range Rover, <laughs> I think of a dirty bus. <laughs> yeah. You can run as far as, you can run as fast and as far as you want. But when you look back, you're going to be smelling bus fumes, pig. <laughs> That's what it felt like. I'm like, why would I? It's like giving a recovering heroin addict an ornament of a needle. <laughs> you know, like, here, put this syringe on the tree. <laughs> only, one, yeah, only ever one step away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was just such a weird ge ge yeah. game. Well, she, you, you, you've always, I, I, I look, I, she's very nice to me when I see her, but you, I've always observed a certain level of, uh, 
What did the kid say? Salt? It's just, oh, she saltiness? likes me. She likes no. me. And she just remembers when I was a drug addict. Sure. She puts a little salt on it. Yeah. She remembers when I was a drug addict. And it's like, you know, what do you want me to do? Yeah. You know? <laughs> You got to go back and fucking... I'm sorry I stole from your house. I didn't ever stole from your house. But I was like, I think it's just the idea that like she's like, you know, trying to do the right thing. It's not, it was right. nice that she sent the ornament. I just, I go, I say to myself, I go, wait a minute. Right. She also sent me a conspiracy board game. And I was like, what the fuck is this? What, and what, 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 what has this worked this game? Do you even look at it? I didn't even look at it. It was just a conspiracy board game. And I'm like, is this what we're doing? How about no presents? Was it just like a Mr. Potato Head, but it's Kennedy? And you just yeah, keep hitting it? <laughs> you just keep hitting it. I don't know what it is, but it's just like, oh, it's a fun, like, conspiracy board. And it's like, that's not what we're doing here. <laughs> David Dobrik, by the way, we talked about this, talking about puzzles and games. David Dobrik came up with a game called the $100,000 Puzzle. He sold 17,000 of them in an hour. And people that buy the game can win up to $100,000. He didn't sell a board. He's, he's, he's selling gambling. <laughs> he's just selling lotto tickets. Yeah. What is this? You made a great point. He really is like the Willy Wonka for poor people. Yeah. <laughs> Come with me and you'll see. I mean, like, give, like, I'll give you, was he giving them Porsches or something? He shows up with Lambos occasionally. Yeah, look, I don't even know if he is a good guy. Yeah. Here's the thing. <laughs> It's the last thing you want to give to someone who isn't financially stable and like financially literate with money, like like someone who's actually like in the, in the grips of poverty. There's things you have to work really serious think, tax implications. Yeah. And like, do you think they let them keep the cars? Or like right after the cameras are off, somebody comes in and takes the car, and the guy's like, "What?" They go, "You knew what this was." Yeah. You know what do you think you're being given? Here's, here's yeah. your appearance fee. Yeah, yeah. Here's two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. But there's something funny about like this whole thing, whether it's him or Jeffrey Star, and I've talked about it on the show before. This idea of YouTube philanthropy, like these guys, and the way that they are like a lot of they they're just like, hey, I'll hit your Venmo. And it's so sad watching people on Twitter be like, listen, <laughs> you know, my wife is out of work. She just had an operation. I have COVID. I can't really. And it's so sad. They're like tweeting at these big people to pay their bills. It's fucking terrible. And what's so sad is just like, I'll see that. But also in that same feed, people I knew from comedy going, "Hey, me and my roommate really we, we lost our waitressing job, sort of, and yeah. uh, we, you know, we 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 really use help with the rent." And it's just like it's just a stacking of like because you, yeah. you, you can't vet these people, so it's just like, no. I mean, that's why it's so devastating to watch and sad, and it's also like a lot of these people. No one quite knows why they have money. Like right. nobody knows why David Dope. Like we all know why, but nobody know like. I'm confused right. as to why he has the amount of money he does. Yeah. But he it, probably doesn't. No, he does. How much money does he have? What, 10 million or something, right? Oh, so he, 10 million is not enough to be giving away Lambos, though. Well, they spo companies right. sponsor okay. it so and they, this, get, they buy the car. Well, that's what, this is, okay, that's my point. Yeah. What, what does he have? Yeah, fifteen million. She's a lamb. He's a Lambo. He's a Lambo salesman. He sells Lambo. He's a Lambo advertiser. And, and listen, good for it, whatever. But he made the money. You know, he gets a lot of views and uh, stuff like that. He's not look. But you watch it yeah. and you go, I don't, I, I don't get it. But it's not for me to get. But here's the thing: when I don't hate the guy, it's, it's a good grift, whatever. But you go, he's bringing more positivity into the world than would be other. I don't know if he is. It's just, it's just yeah. weird. It's, it's, it's. it's it's always this weird grift where it's just like, who is this actually helping? You probably, like the lotto. I mean, the amount of people who get lotto like, when they win big and just completely fuck their There's lives. There's a certain amount of success, which I'll probably never reach, where you just have to start saying things like, look under your seat. <laughs> to that. Like, there's a certain amount of money where people just expect you to give them things. Right. No matter what, they're like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go get a free, like, water fan if I, if I sit through uh, two hours of Oprah. Like, that was a big thing. Oprah started it. Like, look under your seat. Then Ellen did it. And they give everybody, like, there's just a certain amount of money. Wherever you, whenever you hit that amount of money, people expect you to just walk around and give them shit. Yeah, this is the kind of thing you should do when you're a criminal. Right. Like, you're legit, like, mob boss. Yeah. You know? like, right. You're just buying loyalty from right. people. <laughs> Ellen should have given those cars to her staff who she beat the shit out of. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Give them to the people that are genuinely hurting. Give them a fucking Hyundai Sonata. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's always, you look at people in the audience at Ellen or Oprah and you go, there couldn't be anyone less deserving than these middle class pieces of shit. Right. Upper middle class have nothing to do but watch a television. When I was broke, 
I, I there was nothing less important than going to watch a TV taping. Right. Like the idea that like anyone in that position needs anything other than more work. Like it should be look under your desk. There's more work for you to do. Don't <laughs> come back to this fucking studio to watch me interview Kirsten Bell, Kristen <laughs> Bell, or whoever yeah. the fuck Alan's talking to. But yeah, it's interesting. The Dobrik game. What did you find anything about it? It's it's. See, he made 350 grand. But yeah, but it, it, a lot of it's a lot of games to sell in an hour. That's why sure. we need a product, Ray. We can't keep fucking around. Entertainment, man. You you know, fu- you could you could really f- go scratch with what, entertainment. Wait, what about something you could fuck? You know, I'm a little, listening. A little, like a Furby that like like because the flashlight was too big and it's just too gross. You, you, and it doesn't look like a living thing. You need like a like a our own version of a Furby. Like, but it's like maybe uh, you know. Oh, a face, uh, like, like a non... What about a Furby with a very small mouth for pedophiles? Look, I mean, it's better if they're doing that than if you're, you know, with kids, but... And that's exactly what we'll say. Sure. Like a, <laughs> a, a small mouth for a pedophile to face fuck. Why are you pushing back? I just don't know if we should lead with that. <laughs> I'm I mean, just look, saying... Look, pedophiles are, 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 if nothing else, resourceful. They'll figure it out. Like, right. you know, they'll share it on their before. I don't want them to. Understood. I don't know but we, we do because we don't want them to fuck the actual kids. Fine, but fine. But I don't know if we need to like come out in, in the advertise in, in the press conference and establish so we'll just that. say it's a child's doll, but for a million other things. Well, massage the, the, the dildos that women use are massagers, right? Like right, sure, yeah. So no, like, this this is it to practice if your child falls in the pool. Yeah, giving him is, giving him uh, chest compressions and mouth to mouth. This is this is problematic. <laughs> This is complicated. My agent calls me. He's like, uh, Lakeith Stanfeld sees you're a pedophile doll and thinks it's great. Now, he doesn't want to go into business with you immediately, but just keep in mind that Lakeith Stanfeld thinks you're a pedophile doll. He's great. Oh, you got to be a pedophile for me? Oh, shit. That's, that's tight. Somebody at Danny McBride's company who is a pedophile <laughs> is really likes it. Doesn't want to say who it is. They sent us a message through Discord that they really like the doll. I mean, could yeah, I don't even want to like, you know, keep this going, but like you could have a thing where like and the problem is only kids would wear it, so it's not good, but you'd like where it'd be a fucking thing that you could wear, but you also fuck. But then it'd just be a thing that kids wear in high schools and we and we get in trouble for it. Yeah. We don't bracelets, want to get in trouble. Those bracelets that kids used to those snap bracelets. Yeah, Remember a snap bracelet? I have snap bracelets, yeah. Where you would snap it on your wrist. It, it would like Do you remember, the, Ben? Wow. Kids would get cut because it's a, it's a metal thing in there. And they would like yeah. cut their wrists open. And then there were pogs. I had pogs. I had an OJ, uh, OJ Slammer. OJ Simpson Slammer? Yeah. Wow. It, it said, keep OJ out of the Slammer or something. Oh, and, and the back of it had a picture, like an engraving of a gun <laughs> to his head. OJ. And then remember, uh, more recently, it was the fidget spinner. I never had those. I didn't yeah. care, but apparently they were like a thing, and then they're, now they're nothing. Now they're nothing. Yeah, like, uh, for like a, a year there, everyone was claiming to be like an kind of OCD maniac who like had to like fucking at all time be honking 15 different things. Right. You see these like advanced fidget spinners that have like knobs and like right. wheels and gears. <laughs> and they see people, these YouTubers go, I like this. I have to fiddle with things. Like it, it's... I love it's like you could show somebody a picture, like you go go back in history, you show somebody a picture of the future, you see all these people fidgeting with all these things, like, oh, what are all these gadgets do? It's like, oh, nothing. Man. They're just, they're just uh, uh, for something to, for people to do that are on too many SSRIs right. to get their dick hard. So they just want to play with a fucking weird fucking... What is going on with Bitcoin? You know about Bitcoin. You're a financial analyst. I, I, I know, what I know about Bitcoin is what it I knew... It seems like it's going high. I don't know... I know as much as I knew five years ago, which is that's, it's nothing. It's bullshit. Raise a Bitcoin hater. I, look, what I, if this is a controversial stance? I think it's possible. It could grow over time into a thing that people use, but no one's really using it yet. And again, I don't have all the numbers. If you're some Bitcoin nerd out there and you're going to tell me, but I've had people who hate, hate tech tweeting me for years now because I've, I haven't been up on Bitcoin for the old show from, and, and going, I'm like, why don't you like Bitcoin? It's going to go up. And with it, it drops and it drops and it drops. And these same people are going, you don't believe. It's, look, it's a bubble. Now, can these blockchain currencies work? Yeah, maybe. Like, you know, people, if they get adopted and they don't get, you know, uh, Got the kibosh from the Fed and all that, 
you know, if the banks don't keep them out, you know, by the time the banks get, you know, actually allow them if they do, they're going to actually be you're decentralized. Gonna get, you're going to get so much hate from that. And I not, know. not only because I am starting a cryptocurrency with David Dobrik. Should David Dobrik start his own Bitcoin? <laughs> How great would it be if he just literally, like, what if YouTubers started issuing currencies? <laughs> like, just pay with dough bucks. Just pay with dough bucks. That could, look, but he, yeah, goes, like, he, goes, he goes to like the most like, economically depressed areas of yeah, LA. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. He's yeah. like, we're going to give you a million dollars in dough bucks. Yeah. We're go I'm going to Compton and I'm handing out my new currency, dough bucks. <laughs> if you're fucked, line up right after you get your COVID test, which is fake, not COVID, but the test is fake. Come and get dough bucks. And we'll see. I mean, that would be great if, like, let's keep the grift going, go, move into other things, move into bigger arenas. Like, yeah. like, like currency arbitrage. Why don't we just somehow get you installed in a foreign government and, like, literally take but, bribes? But because of the way I look, it would have to be, like, the shittiest foreign governments, like Ireland. Like, well, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Only, the, the only government where I could literally probably assimilate, get into, and they're so dumb over there that I could get, like, they... Did you I, think we were going to make you the king of England? Does Ireland even have a CIA? No. Yeah. It's like, they have, like, guys who throw, like, literally just throw Molotov cocktails at the cops. They have guys that just, like, 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 just literally, like, light Protestant baby strollers <laughs> on fire. That's their version of the CIA. <laughs> but it's like, that's the only government I could probably get into. Hello, I'm Patty O'Flanagan. <laughs> My name is Patio Flanagan. I'm the new senator from Derry. <laughs> I'll tell you a few things about this country. I believe in the future of Ireland. I believe in a free Ireland. I believe in a free Ireland. I believe that, that we, have to, we have to fight for the Church of Rome. <laughs> what? I mean, even if it's not you, but we do, is there an angle we can get with the politician? No. We, why not? Why why well, can't we, it, a, like a low a, level, a low, like we start small, but you need, you need like a low level center. Also, listen to this. Yeah. You're going to love this. So I'm, first of all, I'm in New York right now. And the reason that I'm in New York is because a, re a seafood restaurant opened. I've told you about Artie's Fish, sure. South Shore Fish. Yeah. Now, we never went. Did we never we, had, got a chance. Like, we went to other ones near there, but yeah. Artie's closed. I was very depressed. Yeah. You know how much I like restaurants. Yeah. And well, you we, know, yeah. I, I don't really have a family, you know? Not that you like. Right, so I, I love restaurants. So, like, I was like, let's go. And I did get to see my mother through the window of the mental institution, which was lovely. It was very nice, you know? It was a nice kind of visit. I was just, it was like, sorry, Trump lost. She's like, I know, it's bad. I'm like, she goes, I hope the new guy keeps giving me a stipend. She goes, Trump gave me 1200 and it went into my account. I hope the new guy gives me a stipend. And I'm like, well, I hope so, too. <laughs> I hope for your sake and everyone else's sake, I, I also hope so. So we go to Artie's because they contacted me on Instagram. They're like, we're back and we're doing fish. And I'm like, Ben, let's just get on a plane and come here, which I did. And there's no quarantine. There's no nothing. I mean, everybody's like, there's, there's, and I guess, is this this thing that the media is doing to scare people, that, which I get because I guess they don't want people to travel, but like they're putting all this information out. There's like, there's checkpoints at the bridges and tunnels and the military is in the airports. It's like, there's none of that. Okay. Yeah. I don't even know. But like, I mean, there's none they, of like, it. But what would they do anyway? <laughs> tell you to go home? Like, tell you to go. <laughs> Go quarantine. Okay. <laughs> That's a great point. Son, what the hell are you doing? I, I don't know. I'm getting pizza. You go on home. <laughs> Just a big military guy. You don't get sick, boy. <laughs> you stupid fuck. <laughs> sir, yes, sir. I will go home. Just firing his gun to the air. <laughs> yeah. I'm not powerless. <laughs> the empire endures. <laughs> Just screaming. It's like, who is this? Who did you hire? <laughs> um, so we're sitting in Artie's today. Alphonse D'Amato walks in. 82-year-old <laughs> senator from the town I grew up in, Island Park. And oh, he's from Island Park? He's from Island Park. He's from Brooklyn. He lived in Island Park. D'Amato's like, read, can you on mic, read a little bit about D'Amato. Set this up for people because it is truly amazing. Okay, so D'Amato was of Italian ancestry, was born in Brooklyn and raised on Long Island in the small village of Island Park, which is great. Um, he was the last Republican senator for New York from 1981 to 1999. Um, the only charity he is a part of is the Poker Players Alliance, <laughs> which is a, it's a nonprofit organization set up to help protect and fight for the rights of poker players what? in the United States. It's a lobby for the online poker. Yeah, yeah, so... It's so, like a charity. Oh, oh, please tell us the book. 
Tell us, Ben, can you tell us the title? Find the title of his book and then tell us the title of Damato's book and then we'll talk about Damato because the lunch was amazing. But you got to, this is, if you, if, if, if you didn't learn enough about him by just, and shout out to him. I might see him again at this restaurant. I'm not trying to make things weird. But the name of the book he wrote is absolutely perfect. The name of the book is Power, Pasta, and Politics. <laughs> <laughs> the word according to the world according to Senator Aldamato. Look at the look at that, right? <laughs> he looks like he's like a he like he's an Alzheimer's. He's so just... listen to this. He hates Trump. He goes like this, right? He sits down. He's talking to the, with the owner of the restaurant. He goes, listen. He goes, you know why he lost this election? He goes, you got Giuliani in there. Giuliani's going over to Ukraine, hiring a bunch of crooks. He goes, Giuliani's a snake. He goes, I made Giuliani. I put Giuliani on. He goes, Giuliani's got no loyalty to anybody but himself. But himself. And he goes, the guy's a scumbag. And he goes, Trump's also a scumbag. He goes, you don't think Trump's cheated on everything? Uh, uh, D'Amato goes, Trump doesn't pay any of his fucking workers. And the guy that owns the restaurant goes, yeah, he owed my buddy 80 grand. He only gave him 60. D'Amato's like, you're lucky he got 60. You used to have to sue him to get money. And then it was so funny because I'm sitting there with Ben and we're listening to this whole thing. And I'm like, Ben, don't you get it now why I don't get invested in any of this shit emotionally? Because this is just, they're all criminals. Like, D'Amato's a criminal. D'Amato's a criminal. Like, Giuliani, who prosecuted the mob, is, like, hiring mobsters to, like, help Trump. Like, right. they're all full of shit. Right. The whole thing's a grift. And, like, it's just so funny listening to D'Amato talk because anyone from New York who knew Trump knew he wasn't, like, to say that Donald Trump cares about the working man is like saying Tim Dillon cares about the American no, vegan. I, I, it's I, hilarious. I, I, I had uncles telling me that like over Thanksgiving dinner when I was ten about Trump. Yeah, before he was even like a guy. He yeah, was, like, it, was, it was a known thing forever. He has no empathy. The guy doesn't care at all. But it was so funny how just just uh, D'Amato unloading on Giuliani for the, ma the majority of the lunch. <laughs> I mean, look, what did Giuliani even do on 9 eleven? That's what I'm confused about. How did he become America's mayor? I think he... Was he digging people out of the, of the ground no, zero? I think he stood there, and I think he was the mayor. I mean, he... Like, I mean, he was, um, he was... He performed his mayoral duties, and he was... You know, I think he maybe gave a few speeches. I don't remember any Giuliani speech. I right. remember the famous Bush thing yeah. where he got on the microphone and he was like, we're going to find the people who did this. I'm just saying, this guy has got... He, look, he, he fell far from grace, but he was built up so hard... F nine eleven. Well, he did a good job in New York, I think, yeah, in the fine, beginning. Yeah. yeah, and 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 there was a lot of reasons New York cleaned itself up. You know, the infusion of foreign, you know, not foreign, but but capital, Disney World, all that shit. You know, right. made change New York as a city, but like the economy got better. The economy in the nineties just got better anyway. If people remember, sure. Um, but Giuliani certainly should get some credit for that because he did do a lot of 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 good things for the city of New York at the time. But then he just has become a, 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 a goon. And then you see that this is who he was the whole time. It's just a goon. Remember when he ran for president? It was like it was absurd at that point. That was when you realized he wasn't like as brazen about it, but he was just inept. That was when he first started the, like, the chink in the armor when he's just, oh, he's not good at this. Like he's just, he kept bringing up 9 11 every time. Every seconds. question was 9 11. He's like, well, I was from a, I ran a city that was attacked. Was I like, allowed Al Qaeda to yeah. destroy the soul of my city. He's like, listen to me. Bernard Carrick and the Saudi government <laughs> wired those buildings. And I sat there and I didn't say a goddamn thing. Do you have any idea what that's like going to bed every night with the deaths of 3,000 plus people on your hands? He got like shit because like apparently firefighters hate him because uh, there, there, there was some thing where they wanted to like, <laughs> like so at, at one point, I don't know if it was day two or three after 9 11, it turned, like they realized there's a river of molten gold under like Tower 7 or some shit under the rubble. What a goddamn hellhole this country is. We keep going. <laughs> and so Giuliani goes, we have to like, you know, secure this, I guess. We can't have the, the gold all swim away. So he pulls people off of like, Looking for like firefighters' bodies and victims and all this shit. Goes, you have to go. I don't know. Collect the molten gold with like a pail. I don't know what he did. But like, but they they, they it's hate like him a forever scene now. From Lord of the Rings, yeah. he's like, listen, you must find the river of gold. <laughs> it's like my brother is in that building. He's gone. <laughs> Nothing to be done. But there's a river of gold coursing through the veins of this city, and you gotta find it. What a sick, sadistic. Society, this is that's America's mayor. That's what he did, right? You're like, what did Giuliani do? He directed the effort of the fire department to find the river of gold. 
That's what he did. That should be a children's book. Rudy Giuliani, 9 11 in the River of Gold. It's like a weird Harry Potter book. Rudy Giuliani in the River of Gold. What a fucking creepy fucking dude. I mean, that is hilarious. Yeah, he just never. He just, but but D'Amato was unloading on him on lunch, uh, lunch today. Yeah. And he's like, and then he got mad at Jimmy Hayes, who has a steakhouse across the street. He's like, that cocksucker. <laughs> D'Amato goes, I go in there with a gift card. It's not working. Jimmy's like giving me shit. He's like, that cocksucker's sitting there drunk. <laughs> <clears throat> he's sitting there drunk. And Jimmy does like get drunk and just sit at the bar and yell and shit. And like, he's like, like, I've been going there 40 fucking years, this fucking cocksucker. Whatever. It, we'll I mean, go back to this restaurant tomorrow and eat. It's so good. Everyone go there. South Shore Fish and Island Park. And then listen, if nobody, if I can't ever go again, I, I at least I had these. Well, nice you guys had meals, lobster. And- oh, we went all out. We got tuna tartare and buffalo calamari and, and the tuna tidbits and swordfish and sole. And I mean, we just, it was really good. I mean, we're staying in a dump. What was the Milo eating? Swordfish. Uh, seems kind of lame. Yeah, it was good. I'm I mean, sure it was good. It was swordfish. It just seems like uh, he's trying to, you know. Guy's 82. He had COVID two weeks ago. What's with all these people? It's just, you're all just getting COVID eating fish. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. They don't give a shit. My, my friend Michael has COVID. I'm like, he's doing anything. Is anyone, he's 82. Does anyone die from this anymore? I don't think so. <laughs> I got to be honest. I don't think I, I don't think so. There's always a freak cake. There's always right. like a thing that happens. Like my Aunt Donna collects tragedies. Right. So she'll be like, she's always at the ready with like some like, well, one guy turned blue. Like I don't want to be insensitive, but I mean, do you think this is your... Is it kind of a gimme for people whose kids died of an overdose? What do you mean? Like, uh, we'll just tell people it was COVID. Free case. Oh, yeah, but that's got to be horrible if they don't believe you. Like, they keep <laughs> digging. Like, I'm like, yeah, you know, um, John lost his fight with COVID. And you go, COVID? <laughs> it's 24 years old. It's, it, can, it can affect young people. It can affect young people. You know, it was shocking for us. And uh, it was very, and you're like, where did he die? <laughs> Jail. <laughs> Died in jail of COVID. Uh, no, but it's like it's like somebody being like, "Hey, hey, he died of COVID, twenty five. Yeah, it don't was, you watch the news? It can happen. It can happen. You know, it's just he started to have all these weird symptoms. He had lesions on his forearms and wrists, and uh, you know, he started stealing all of our money. Is that part of COVID? Yeah, it's. <laughs> It's one of these new symptoms they have where the kids start stealing your money and accusing you of molesting them. Always, always yeah. sweating and cold. He was sweating. He was saying, I, I know what you did to me. You touched me. You let people touch me. Like, it was weird. COVID. All of these odd symptoms. Of COVID. But it's just so funny when you're listening to D'Amato and then uh, you're listening to trash all these people. Just talking, like, really kind of a- accurately about his perceptions about things, whether they're right or wrong. And he was also trashing Biden. He's like, they got Biden on tape. Telling the Council of Foreign Relations that he's in the Ukraine. His son's getting a lot of money. He goes, you know, CFO, it's like real prestigious. You get in there, you got to spend all this money, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> he's doing all the... But, I mean, he gets he's it, right. man. He's not wrong. He's not wrong about anything. He got it. And I was Ben was hearing it. I'm like, that's politics in America. You want to know what it is? You might not like it. You might want it to be something else. Maybe one day it will be. I'm not telling anyone not to organize. Go force your floor vote for Medicare for All. Do whatever you want to do. But at the moment as it stands, politics in America, it's a goon squad. Do you think the CFR didn't, back in the day didn't fuck with him? Didn't, didn't, didn't like reach out to Al, Al I don't know. I think he was probably a guy that they fucking liked. He's a criminal. Yeah. These are all criminals. I mean, like, these people, politics is a, is crime. It's sure. like, it's legalized bribery and corruption. It's what it is. It's I like, mean, political parties used to literally be, they, they ran gangs, they ran Yeah, companies. yeah. So, I mean, it's just like, this is who these people are, yeah. the direct descendants of, and in, in every meaningful way. And, you know, you can hear that when they're at lunch and just the way he's 82. It's so funny because this cocksucker, I go in there with a gift card. And, you know, like Jimmy's being like, this motherfucker tried to rob me, <laughs> you know, like on the other side. It's just. Yeah, Jimmy's probably like, yeah, we ran this. No, Al, this has already been used. Yeah. No, it hasn't. Keep running it. Like- Keep running. Yeah. He's just trying to get a scam. Demato's yeah. trying to get a scam. He's trying to get a few free stakes. Right. That's really all that comes. Politics in America comes down to a few free stakes. Can you get a few pieces of meat on the arm? I mean, can you imagine how much how much better it tastes than when you fucking like put your wallet out? Like just getting getting like someone to like, get grip. Yeah. It just tastes better. I want to go back just for a minute to 9-11. The funny, and I've told this anecdote on the show before, mm-hmm. but the funniest thing I ever saw in like three years 
of doing uh, leading tours in New York City, like on and off for three years on a yeah. double decker bus. There was this guy named Frank. He was like this kind of intense guy, but not like a conspiracy guy, right? Never like, you know, we'd smoke butts and shit. Good dude. Never really like did tours, never really got complaints. He just got really, he just like got really fucking like heated one day when, and I never, I was taking his bus because I was just sitting on a bus to Deadhead to, to where I was taking a subway back to my house. So he was just doing like this, you know, downtown route. And I lived in Brooklyn at the time. And I was sitting there and he goes, somebody on the bus goes, uh, you know, the fire, you know, man, the fire department, they were all heroes, you know, running in those buildings. And he goes, Frank goes, that's what you think. He goes, I was there. He goes, those firemen were cowards. They were running out of those buildings. <laughs> he goes, they didn't save anybody. They were running out of those buildings. <laughs> he goes, the cops, the firemen, they were cowards. They were crying. They were running away. <laughs> and the faces of the people were so disturbed by how matter of fact he was. He's like, I saw it. Cause he was not characteristic for him to flip out like this. Yeah. He literally saw it or believed he saw it. Like he was like, I saw it. They're cowards. They ran out of those buildings. They didn't go anywhere near them. Well, they could have been running out as they were collapsing. Yeah. He goes, <laughs> he goes, they didn't go anywhere near those buildings. I just never seen someone just flip so That's quickly. Great. It was just fucking phenomenal. Everybody, we're here in the new studio and we're talking about the Ridge Wallet. If you want me advertising your product, do we have an uh, email for the people that want me to advertise their product? The Tim Dillon Show at gmail.com. Hey, if you want me to get behind your business endeavor, go to the Tim Dillon Show at gmail.com if you want to get in the big leagues. If you want to get in the big leagues, spend money to make money. Understand? Ridge Wallet did this. They're at the top of the charts. The Ridge is a minimal front pocket wallet. Can you keep it in your back pocket? Sure. But it's designed for the front pocket. It designed, it's designed to streamline what you carry every day. So, instead of having a bunch of useless clutter in your wallet, you get a credit card, maybe a debit card, a business card of your lawyer, somebody very close to you that you need, maybe cash a little bit, minimal amount, crisp bills, put them in, front pocket, good to go. There's a lifetime warranty if you love it and free returns if you don't. It comes in titanium, carbon fiber, aluminum, or as they say in the UK, aluminium, and over a dozen different styles and colors. How long have we been working with Ridge? About a year now. We've been working with Ridge Wallet mm -hmm. for a very long time. And it is because it's quality. You understand that? Because of the quality. I've never seen a rich wallet. I've never held one. I don't know what they are. I I've never been in a room with one. I don't I don't know what it is. I don't know. What, and I think I've done a very good job selling it. Having no familiarity with the physical form of it. I've just I don't I don't know what it is. You have one. I do. Let take yours out. I don't like this. <laughs> it comes in titanium. Do we still have to send the ads to the people? Uh, yeah, 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 we do. Yeah. Well, they're not gonna like that. No, probably not. Why? We can't even have fun anymore with the ads. Yeah. It's like stupid. Take it out again. I do like it. It's a joke. I'm trying to be funny. And now this f everybody's going to war with our funny. Well, then don't buy the products. Should I just tell people that? Don't buy them? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what to do. This is great. You could fit more in it than you'd think. Look at that. You got a bunch of stuff. You got a bunch of cards. What's that? Eat Well from Weston. 
Mm-hmm. That's a car. What is that? It's a hotel card. You're cheating on your wife? <laughs> oh, that's your wife had to stay there because your brother has COVID. Correct. Congrats. The Weston, huh? Really springing for it. Boy. Was Target booked? Anyway. Let me do the bits, please. Just I'm, I'm, t- I'm asking you, I'm telling you right now to let me do the bits because I know what's funny and what works. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like for far too long, I'm doubted and people don't respect me. But if you want me to really get involved with your, your product, let's get involved. Mm-hmm. Ridge.com slash Tim, T-I-M. Ridge.com slash Tim, use code T-I-M, link in description. So I've never done this podcast, but I know this guy, I know this show, Greg Carlwood, who does the Higher Side Chats. I've listened to it. He has very good discussions on there. If you're in the conspiracy world or you're into it, he goes into everything. I've listened to, he had a great episode about underground military bases and underground tunnels that a friend of mine sent to me. I am... I'm into this show. Legitimately, I think it's good. Um, so if you're into the Whitney Webb stuff that I have on or if the Graham Hancock stuff that Rogan has on, if you're into any of the crazier wacko stuff like David Icke, which can be very funny, um, hundreds of interviews at the Higher Side Chats or wherever you get your podcast. This guy, I don't know his backstory, Greg Carlwood, but I, that's his name, right, Greg Carlwood? I believe so, yeah. It's yeah. like Coast to Coast AM, but it's a little bolder. He's got a great interview style, and he really lets people talk. And, I mean, they do it everything, dude. I mean, I'm talking about MK Ultra, False Flags, Secret Societies, Alien Moon Bases, Hollow Earth, Multidimensional Intelligence, the Controlled Demolition of the American Economy, Deem, Deep State Honeypot Operations, the Rothschild Banking Empire, Tesla Technology, Rockefeller Medicine, the COVID-1984 Agenda. It's this here, how to live your best life despite the never ending scams and schemes of the nefarious elite. He, he really does go into all of it. So if you're, if you're, it's a great show to fire up a joint, listen to, go to the higher side chats.com to sign up. Use coupon code Tim Dillon for a free month of the higher side chats. Um, the Higher Side Chats encourages people to hear from the counterculture scholars, authors, doctors, and interested characters that don't have a voice in the mainstream and see how their perspective and research stands up. I like a show like this because what he does is he gives everyone a hearing. Even if the conspiracy seems um, implausible or crazy, he's a very good interviewer. He gives everyone a hearing. You might be listening to it going, this motherfucker is nuts, but it's still he gives everyone a hearing. And uh, I've listened to a few of the episodes that I've really enjoyed. doesn't mean I agree with everything that's being said or I even think it's correct. I just think that it is a good show, and I think there there needs to be shows like this all over the place. And um, he really has interesting stuff. He has a, the, People come on and talk about the occult. People come on and talk about aliens. It's really just all the counterculture stuff. So I, I would tell you to go to this show. Go to thehiresidechats.com to sign up, thehiresidechats.com to sign up, and you will get a lot of different opportunities to, you know, satiate your hunger for conspiracy type of content in, in, in vastly different ways. So you'll have people talking about the economy, and then you'll have people talking about, you know, health policy and medicine, You'll have people talking about technology. You'll have people talking about underground bases. It goes all over the place. And I, I will put on an episode of his um, when I'm on a plane going somewhere 100%. So go to the thehiresidechats.com to sign up. It was phenomenal. But I'm glad I came across the country. The New York City now, we came into the city. The, the, the city now has outdoor dining in buildings. They right. built... Wood and plastic. Like sheds. Like sheds, like horse stalls that look like they're part of a stable. Like It looks like those things that like we sell Christmas trees out of. It's the strangest. It te- it's exactly what it looks like. It's so odd. And then they have these big tents. Like in Long Island, some people have these tents. And I go, what the fuck's going on? Like, how is it not transmissible in a tent or in an outdoor building without insulation? Yeah, I would think, you know... Um 
I, I, look, I guess there's still airflow. I mean, can't it, we just put better filtration systems in the fucking building? You no, know, I don't know. I think they're allowed to. This is the thing. I think there are like there's a, there's a lot of companies that like can open but don't because like you have to build negative airflow things and they're expensive. Like it's like, right. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people's jobs just are, are just working from home because like what are we gonna do? Spend like ten million renovating the building? We'll just, right. Yeah, we'll just, it's like it's. Um, yeah, I, look, I hear you. I mean, uh, are they still doing like, you know, do you want the truffles on, the, on your macaroni when you're sitting in the shed? I mean, I don't know what they're doing. They're just, I mean, we, we had dinner at a place tonight. It was like, whatever. The quality of everything here is just no, it's, declined it's, precipitously. I got to be honest with you. I mean, the quality of New York City dining is, it's just dipped. And they're just slinging food to high-end tourists Even on, the, on your way out of the city, like a like year and a half, two years ago, whatever yes. it was. We were having some bad nights. It was noticeably yeah. different. It was noticeably different. They're they're just pounding money out of foreign tourists. It's beating not them over the head. Just beating them over the head. It's expense account money. It's people that are throwing this throwing their company card out. They don't. They're not going out anymore. They're not saving up and going out for the special occasion that they want to be amazing. They're just throwing corporate money at some forgettable night. They just want to get plastered, yeah. and that's what it is. And you go to a lot of these places, and you go, the food is just not really what it was. I came up in the era of 90s to New York City where it's like, it's some of the greatest chefs that you know now as celebrity chefs were actually cooking in their restaurants in the 90s. That's the other problem. Chefs got famous, and they left their restaurants. Right. And now we're just replacing them with line cooks who are good or sous chefs, but like chefs are now running little mini empires instead of cooking. Are these is part of the problem that the money? Can I, I imagine that like in the let's say the Mad Men era, the sixties right. and seventies, it was pretty easy to hide strip clubs and whores on the company you know, expense account, and it's, you know things have probably gotten just in general a lot harder to do that kind of thing later on. So did that money get diverted into restaurants? Is my question. Like, is that, is that part of the boom in the eight? Or I don't know. Or or like on the same note. Can will will restaurants just get you a hooker and put it on their bill? There used to be girls that would hang out and in the big steakhouses in New York, and there there might still be, but there were girls that would hang out a hundred percent. If I want a whore, yeah, and can can they just call it a baked potato? Now you, yeah, they just put it on the bill (laughs) as a baked potato, a thousand dollars. He got the thousand dollars, but now it's like there is an actual baked potato that's a thousand dollars, and there's caviar and some garbage. Certain nights, girls would certainly hang out at the things. I think the, a lot of the problem was it's just like everything else. It's like chefs now run empires. Yeah. And they have TV shows and they have, you know, gourmet delis in addition to their restaurants. And they have outposts in Vegas and everything else. And you get to a point where the quality ultimately suffers because it's no longer about doing something really unique and good. But it's about, you know, being this, you know, massive mogul. Right. And you're just, I mean, I remember I went to Wolfgang Puck's restaurant in Vegas, Lupo. It was so grotesque. <laughs> I was embarrassed. I was with this woman. I had gone out with this girl, Nicole, in Vegas. She was like, we were kind of like dating, I guess, on oh, and years off. ago. Yeah. Years ago, you know, senior year of high school, 2003. And we went and we went there and the food was so bad. And I'm just like, wow, Wolfgang Puck slaps his name on this. But now it's like, you get it. You're like, oh, he's just making a shitload of money. Yeah. He was Julia Child's like weird, creepy friend, right? I don't know. I, I think he. I think I'm, I'm just saying these people. No, that's yeah, Jacques they, Pepin. Oh, right? that's right. That, that creep. Okay. I think why is he a creep? They're all creeps to me. You um, get Jacques Pepin and definitely is a seller of children. Oh yeah. Yeah, that guy's a freak. Well, so many of these people. My name is Jacques Pepin. You learn to make a couple of good de- look. He, put it this way. I mean, Zeppelin, uh, the Who. I mean. Like, the great bands. The sto- what are the Stones doing now? What's the last time the Stones had a great album? I agree. Let's take them down a notch. Right. Fuck them. Fuck the Rolling Stones. I agree. But, but, we're gonna like, but these chefs just are going to keep going. It's like, you have a hit early on, but they trade on this name as if like their yeah, food is like... Yeah. You put goat cheese on a pizza. We get it. Right. Yeah, you did it. Spago, you so did good. it. It's so good. Yeah. Like, when, when you go there, and it's low key, you go to New Orleans. And they come get these fucking charbroiled oysters and it's big and it costs you like 15 bucks. It's like, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. As soon as you start telling someone you have to take a trip there, you have to go here, you have to eat it. Very rarely does anything hold up. Nothing is really right. that good in life for the most part. There are yeah. a few things, but for the most part, things are pretty good and people try to define their lives by them. And then they tell you, this is the greatest thing I've ever had in my life. Well, there's and nothing, so- there's nothing, because I go to New Orleans, I get the, I, I go to Desire Oyster Bar. People go yeah. to Acme. And, uh, Desire Oyster Bar is a regular oyster bar in the Royal Sinesta Hotel. It is fine. 
the, the weight is a lot less. You sit there, you get the grilled oysters with the butter sauce and the bread. You get the whole, hey, the whole thing is there, right? You yeah. want the raw oysters, you got, and I'm sure maybe Acme is a little better, but the line and the whole thing. I went to Acme. I bet it's fine. It's the same it's shit. It's good. It's like, yeah. the same shit. You know, so at the end of the day, it's like the hype around anything yeah. destroys it. Right. That's the amazing thing about the culture that we live in now. The marketing hype, the endless marketing machine, you're not going to have fun playing that dough brick puzzle. Right. You just think you are. Yeah. Like, the hype around it destroys it. How many people think killed themselves after losing the dough brick puzzle? <laughs> this is my last shot. Uh, David Dobrik dealing with bad PR as a, his puzzle responsible for a rash of suicides. <laughs> That's the other thing. It's like, when are these people going to just start uploading photos of themselves, blowing their brains out? Like, hey, Jeffree Star, you didn't pay my rent? Well, how about this? No hashtag, no Lambo. Yeah. <laughs> hashtag no Lambo. Or a guy that just blows his brains out in the Lambo. <laughs> I wanted red, not blue. This wasn't enough. <laughs> this wasn't enough. It didn't fill the hole. And by the way, we're supposed to do some show where I like, interview these people. Like... We're supposed to do a show where, like, David Dobrik agrees to talk with me. <laughs> it is. Or the D'Amelio girls. Like, I'm supposed to do this show. Like, I'm in talks to do it, and I'd love to do it. But, like, right. the idea that anyone is going to let these social media kids anywhere near me. Like, if these D'Amelio girls who have closed in, like, every store, they're, like, zillionaires. They own TikTok. They've got 180 million followers combined or maybe more. The, if, if they are in a room with me, there have been failures on every level of their PR strategy. Yeah. Like, that means that nobody is paying attention. Like, nobody's done their job. That means, like, you've not only breached the White House lawn, you're in the Oval Office with a loaded gun. Do you think someone gets fired over the course of the, of the season if you do the season? Someone. Yeah. Everyone. <laughs> if you're a PR company, you use this as a way to get in with them and go, that Dylan fuck up? I mean... <laughs> Clean the fucking house. Who is this fat fuck? He's got 300,000 followers. He's talking to your daughter about 9-11? Your daughter's America's sweetheart. She's got fucking Ira Postal jeans. This fucking idiot's there doing bits about Rudy Giuliani and 9-11 in front of your daughters? Did you take the D'Amelio sisters to the 9-11 mall? <laughs> Just going to different boutiques. I mean, or like, do like, there's no way in hell Dobrik's coming on a, a show. Because my first question to him would be like, "You seem to be like a Willy Wonka for poor people. Right. How did this happen? <laughs> How did this happen?" And I don't. Well, Tim, what I'd like to talk to you about is, what is he like? What is even his main? Is this, like I, this is all gimmicks, right? But what's his main gig? He's a YouTuber. Okay, so it's just like, I just want to talk to you about my YouTube show where I... Like, what is even the content of Dope? I, I like, think he made funny, cute Vine videos that people liked, and now he does... You know, well, he like putting made, things in his mouth? I don't know what they do. Like Will Sasso? Listen, every time I try to watch any of these YouTube videos, it's YouTubers talking about what they're doing, and none of them are ever doing... Like, they're like, all right, so today it's day in the life. Super excited for this video. So we're waking up today, now I'm brushing my teeth. Now I have my guy... Now I have my assistant, and my I'm here in a mansion. My assistant is going to take my dog for a walk. And I'm like, how did this all start? Like, how do you get to mansion? Like, every YouTuber I watch, I guess I got to go earlier, because now they're all so famous. Everything they're doing is interesting, because they're so rich, right? So they're like, hey, I have a golden toilet, and then that's the video. But I'm like, how did this all come together? Like, what's the early work? <laughs> if he, Show me your early work. Before he did level, you go, well, I got to be honest with you, Tim. I let uh, wealthy, rich men piss all over me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't. But I would. I would. I would understand, that. right? <laughs> but no, I think. I think these guys are brilliant. Listen, at some point on this planet, talent became offensive. Right. I don't know when, but at some point, somebody who became ta you could almost you know maybe it was these like American Idol type shows. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was something where talent became like weird like maybe it was like looking behind the scenes at talent nobody wanted to do that everybody just wanted to see judy garland come out and sing somewhere over the rainbow nobody needed to know she was a pill head and a drunk and beat her daughter <laughs> like there's a certain point when the e true hollywood story got too much people like you know what enough we don't really need to see all of the shit that went into this i, I always think about it like i'll be laying in bed at night going at what point did people just decide we don't want talented people anymore but it, it happened. Right. At a certain point, people go, we don't want... Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, He's yeah. too showboaty. Yeah. Eddie <laughs> Van Halen. He's just fucking... <laughs> it wasn't even music anymore. Just, like... <laughs> it's too fast. 
You didn't like it. <laughs> it was coked out. They finally came to and was like, oh, enough. We'll just we'll have a who's going to blow. But fish. at some point, I maybe it was Susan Boyle when she came <laughs> out. It was like this ugly woman who sang. No, but she's so like, talented. We don't care. This yeah, just melted everyone's head. They're like, we don't want any of that. <laughs> I don't know when it was, but at a certain point, people were like, we don't want that. So what they wanted was like this relatability, make me feel comfortable. Shane Dawson, like, not great looking, decent looking, not like not not horrific looking, but like very average across the board guy. Not that funny, not that talented, but was open and let you see everything about his life. And and you, they were selling access to their lives and all of their thoughts and all of their feelings and and how they interacted with the world. And I guess that's what people at, at a certain point. That's what people started to find interesting. They're like, I just want a friend. I don't want somebody who's talented. I don't know when that happened. And not to take anything away from these people, right? Not to take anything away from Dobrik. I'm sure there are talents there. You don't get that big with that certain kind of talent. But I think the main thing was that these people just had a real insatiable need to post their lives online and the people connected with I think it's also, I, look, it, their product of the time. But I think that the... It wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the weird appetite on the people. Well, of course. And like, it's like they're at some point you could, your dad couldn't yell at you. He couldn't make you feel stupid. And like, it was like everything had to be softened. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to say, oh, nerf the world. Everyone can, I'm not an incel. But I'm just saying, but there was a certain point where like you had to kind of take it on the chin a little bit. Right. And like these kids don't, it's like, it's like it, variations of the whole, you know, participation trophy horse shit, whatever you want to call it. And so, like, this coddling, this coddling never would have worked when we were kids. I mean, we would have... Uh... No, it's, it's coddling, but it's something deeper than that. It's something strange. I don't know what it is. I, I, I think about it all the time. It's not simply that. Um, I think that plays a part in it. That sets a, a cultural 100% tone. But there's something, there's something going on where people are watching other people open gifts that they didn't get. Right. There's something going on where people are watching someone eat food, like a mukbang, just gorge themselves with food. And they, they don't care about literature. They don't care about movies. They don't really, music is whatever. But like they're, they're, they're passing their time by watching someone gorge themselves with large quantities of food. And I don't know if it's sexual, if it's a repressed desire. I don't know what deep, dark, weird shit is going on in our minds that this type of content is appealing to people, but it really is appealing to people. It's like a blanket. A mukbang is a blanket. Do, is it? I don't. I never got into them. Are they I, good? They're not good. Well, look, here's the thing about mukbangs, at least ones I've watched, is they're done by these guys like Stoney. Shout out to Stoney, who was just a small guy who's like a competitive eater. Uh, Stoney from Long Island Comedy Scene? I don't think so. Okay. I think it's just some dude who's like he will pound like fit, f like a hundred big. Trish Paytas used to do a ton of them. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. You know, he just got. I think one like he's one. Of the, he competes in the Coney Island competition okay. and stuff. I'm just saying, like, it's not. So it's not. It's the guy doing it. Doesn't seem sad. He's a skinny guy. He's doing it competitively, quote unquote, whatever, whatever that means. That's what his life is like. But I mean, there's a whole. But the pe person watching it is some like f either fat person or like a person who like. Is fat at heart, and they just, like it's it's the lack of uh, filter. It's like it's like you know when they go to McDonald's, I can only have if I even go, I have one Big Mac, maybe two. But this guy just keeps, it's it's the lack right. of no one's telling him no, and it's that it's yeah. That. There's a deep something's happening where it's like we're allowed to see this now, and I think yeah. maybe before we weren't allowed to see it. You know, there wasn't this community of people, there wasn't this platform to view this stuff. I mean, a lot of it's sex. Like the ASMR is sexual for people. The sounds, the feelings, right. the, the way they feel. I mean, I feel weird sometimes when I hear them, but I don't know if it's sexual. Like, but I, I feel like a weird chill sensation. Whatever people claim, or like however many people claim it as a, as a, I'm an ASMR, I, I think it's like 1% of them are, are actually. Like it's, right. it's one of those things where it's like people like because look it sounds pleasant right it's right. not like you're you're fucking playing with like you know razors in your hands and you're cutting your hands and going no it's just weird but I like this no it's a pleasant thing they go this does it for me people don't understand people self self diagnosing themselves well TikTok is fascinating right because TikTok seems to be divided into 
two camps. You have the the cringy TikTok where it's just crazy people doing shit, right? right. And then you have like the young hot kids dancing in mirrors, right? I mean, the, the, we understand that like that's just kind of a rebranding of teeny bot. Here's my thing. Culture now seems more than ever generated or determined by 12-year-old girls. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what's very interesting to well, me. Some of the Beatles. No, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. So what the fuck's wrong with our 12-year-old girl? That's my question. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that, that, that's my question. That's the interesting question. That's the question. Yes. Yeah, because the from the Beatles to somebody dancing... In a house. When did kids have start getting such low standards? Yeah, exactly. The and weird. was it really twelve year old girls that like the Beatles? Or they were a little older, but I get what you mean. You're, there was a huge contingent of that. You're sure. not wrong. It, it is. That's what I mean. Like yeah. the culture. Like adults seem to don't really determine much of the culture. No, I mean it was the extent that they do. It was like Velvet Underground, which was like influential, but no one was chasing them down the airport. But I mean, the, the, yeah. like the people right now in their thirties, what do they determine? I guess podcasts. I yeah, guess that's like, huge. Look, the MMA stuff, the fucking, you know, who's watching, uh, right? You know, supplements and the, uh, you know, whatever, and like, and like the the weird political discourse, you know, SNBC that goes nowhere. Like, that's look. It, it, I don't. Is it any better? At the end of the day, is that even better than the fucking kids dancing in the mirror? No. I think that's a pro the problem is the futility that is out there. Like, the, like there really is no hope. Right. Like, I don't. I think. Even, even it's a new theme for the Tim Dillon show, everybody. <laughs> We're breaking new ground. It's another. Tell them what they want. It's another. They, there is no hope. No, but I really feel like like it's just apparent that even the least cynical people that like, oh yeah, like people have been talking about how screwed up this, this whole system is for decades now, and nothing changes. We had we had Obama, who seems like he would be the guy who would change it. He didn't change. It. Like it's even they don't understand why or how, or they don't understand the power structure per se. But like they get that they're like, oh, it's all kind of fake. It gets more fake every year, and so it breaks the brain in a certain way. Where like you don't like, why would you care about it? Right. Like you know, some guy who's just you know part of the record company. And it's, it's all well. Something happened to me. I bought that dumb Bape hoodie for the sketch I did where yeah. I played the rapper. Was not a hoodie. rapper. What was I playing? An influencer. Right. And I put the hoodie on. I'm in the Bape store, and you know nobody treats you nice as a plus size man buy, buying clothes no. unless you're in the Bape store. Mm -hmm. And a lovely black man came up to me and he goes, you, you look fresh as fuck right now. And I was like, thank you. That's the first compliment I'd ever gotten in a clothing store. And I put that hoodie on and I look ridiculous, right? I look like a candy cane. I got my red sweats. And I, and I, something happened to me. As soon as I put the hoodie on, like I didn't, I was like, I still have it. I'm still going to wear it occasionally. Sure. I, I put it on. I started saying, life is meaningless, but why not like look like a ridiculous person and walk down the street and be a hype beat. Like, I almost understood hype beasts. Right. Because I'm like, oh, here's a community that I'm now a part of. I wasn't a part of it. Then I just put on this dumb sweatshirt, and some guy's like, you look good. And, like, I could have started talking to him. I could have been like, what are you getting? What are you thinking about? Who's got what drop? And you're like, oh, I kind of understand why, you know, that culture is appealing to people. The, al the alternative is insane. The alternative of right. going, no, I... I will find out who did 9-11. <laughs> I don't care how many decades it takes. I, I love that's the, the world that we've decided. It's hype beast or who did 9-11. Right. Like, those are your two choices. Right. Like, being ready, like, all right, kids. So you could grow up to be a hype beast or you could launch an investigation to 9-11. <laughs> your choice. The but the, the, old, the, difference? the alternative is I'm going to fix it or I'm going to buy this hoodie. Right. So well, that's the thing, because there is, like, the, at a certain point, it, 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 it's not even giving up on the conspiracy thing. It's like, at a certain point, did they figure out that if you can kind of create the binary, that, like, because things changed in this country, you know, in the first half of the 20th century, and, like, in the 60s and 70s, they got real change done to a certain extent. And I think, but it was, like, slower, it was incremental. People, like, you know, didn't make a, it wasn't, like, kind of led by, it was, you know, a lot of, like, lawyers gave up their time, and, and like, and, and, and people were activists for years, you know, it was, like, and now it just seems much more, like, all at once, and you, and you fizzle out, and you lose, and then just kind of, you, you don't have the in-between of just kind of, it's normal. It's normal that we all kind of, like, patiently work for things. No, it's just, like, everything or nothing. So it's, like, yeah. you know, it's just how they keep a grip. It's, like, yeah, if you want to be a, you know, go, you, you can go on, you know, in public and, and be a, you know, you can kind of be a loud mouthpiece for a while but it's well, not going to sustain the world is so ridiculous and when i put on that hoodie i'm like oh well i'm just taking my place in insanity now yeah you know in the way in a way that i kind of like understood and it resonated with me immediately because i'm like 
you know, you're listening to D'Amato talk, this cocksucker, this crook, this motherfucker, <laughs> Giuliani, this motherfucker. And you realize that really is what it is. Like, you know, Trump doesn't pay anybody and Biden, he's a cocksucker, crook. Like, and you're like, oh, there's that, which is kind of the way it is. And then you could either live in that and God bless you, try to wade through those murky waters and keep your soul. God love you. Right. Or you could just kind of buy a ridiculous hoodie. I mean, how many people are even capable? Like people, this is, like, this is myth that like life is more than the nice meals and the cigars and the women and the men and whatever the fuck it is, the sensory things that like, even if you are Jimmy Page or whoever, like David Bowie, I mean, how much more satisfied is David Bowie looking at his? I'm sure he's a little, he's something more to look at. I'm not, he, of course, he's more accomplished than, but like, how much happier, or even just if you're not happy, it's just like how much more like fulfilled is he? I don't even know. Like, it's like yeah. these people are often like kind of unhappy. Um, I guess people that feel, you know, when you think about honor and bravery and risk and all these great yeah. virtue and all these things that life is supposed to be about, but then you go in, in the world, <laughs> in the world that we've created, you know, I'm not saying it's impossible to display those virtues. I, I'm sure there are ways to do it. Doesn't it doesn't help when veterans like can't get healthcare. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> you're in your wheelchair. Why can't you walk? Yeah. What happened to your leg? <laughs> I mean, like, it's just like, it's we're subliminally like, you know, there is, and then you have like Tina Forty, right. my favorite out there, motherfucker, Trump twenty twenty, motherfucker. <laughs> she's my favorite person because like she's just selling stop the steel hats and Trump forever socks, and like right. she's just like go to my online store. Everyone's got an online store. Like I get it, but I mean that's why it's like my thing. I'm like I do a podcast. I think it's funny. Buy the merch. We come up with funny merch, shit like that. But like. I'm never going to tell you, like, hey, guys, it's going to be okay. And it, and here's why it's going to be okay, because you're going to go to the online store. Right. Like, the Tina, Tina 40s, like, her, like everything dovetails together. It's like, go to the online store. The revolution's here. We're packing the streets. We're going to every state capital. Trump 2020, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, there's no, there is no Trump 2020. Was the whole Trump thing just an excuse to sell hats? <laughs> I don't, I haven't talked about what that. What if we find out he made a like a few billion selling yeah. those hats? <laughs> Maybe the whole thing's merch. Right. What if the entire Trump presidency was a merch operation? Just a crazy merch operation. Like he should he showed Nelk. He's like, I'm the granddaddy of merch. <laughs> Imagine this. You make a list of the gifts you're gonna buy for the holidays, and then someone randomly gives you the money to help buy one. Sound good? Well, that's what honey is doing. They're helping pay for one million dollars worth of gifts. You're probably wondering, is this the same Honey that automatically searches for promo codes online? Yes, yes, it is. With Honey, you can also make a list of all the holiday gifts you want from certain stores, and Honey will email you when the price drops on anything on your list. That's really cool. Just add Honey to your computer, create a free online account, and throw some holiday gifts on your drop list for a chance to win. Honey will randomly select winners and give them the money to help buy something on their list. I'm going to have honey help me pay for a lot of gifts. There's gifts that I'm going to give you and that I want honey to pay for. No purchase necessary. You need a PayPal account to redeem the prize. Only valid in the U.S. Giveaway ends 12-21-2020. Okay, go to honey. Get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Tim Dillon. My favorite thing about this, there's a million things about it, but it is really cool. You make a list. When prices drop, they'll let you know. That is awesome. That is really, really great. So go to honey for free, joinhoney.com slash Tim Dillon. That's joinhoney.com slash Tim Dillon, T-I-M-D-I-L-L-O-N. What do you think about that spoon? What do you think about that spoon, that magic spoon? New Year's is coming up. You know what's coming up. You know what's coming out there. You know what's coming up. You know what's coming. You know what it is. New Year's resolutions. Changes in the air. 2020 was a bitch. 2021 is going to be a lot better. Okay, magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon. You know what it is. Zero grams of sugar. 11 grams of protein. Three net grams of carbs in each serving. Okay, you can build your own custom variety box. This cereal is keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, low carb, GMO free. I love Magic Spoon. The fruity flavor tastes exactly like Fruit Loops. It's really amazing. It's honestly too good to be true. It's a great snack. If you're on a low carb meal plan, it gets rid of a, a, a snack or a meal. 
Perfect. Really good. Great. People love the breakfast routine. Some people love cereal. Um, I love cereal. Why are you shaking your head? Oh, I was like, I love it so much too. Like, you know. Why aren't you dressed like I'm dressed? <laughs> well, I got the Adidas on. Shut up. You understand that I show up ready to work? <laughs> and you look like shit. And that's going to be a problem. If it's not remedied, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> Magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon to build your own custom variety box and try it today. Magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon to build your own custom variety box. It's great cereal. It's a great way to support our show. It's a great way to support your body and immune health, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't want a lot of sugar in your diet. Bad for your immune system. I just don't understand why you would come to work looking so ridiculous. <laughs> I don't. Un I personally don't understand it, but I understand that you feel that you're not taking it seriously. And we have a new studio, and I want you to start to take it seriously. That's all. That's what I'm saying. Do you understand that? I understand. Magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon, right? Mm hmm Magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon. And use the code. You get free shipping. Use the code Tim Dillon. Good for them. What does his post-presidency look like, if you could guess? Ah. <sighs> I mean, you got look. You buy into this shit. He's gonna be like this big, you know, figurehead in the Republican Party. I don't no. know. What? No. He look. He might still run four years. He he's crazy enough. He might. But either way, he's either gonna live in Trump Tower, or he might. Pop, like, I don't want like fall for like the, the the grift that like oh they're gonna actually arrest him and do all this shit. But he might, and like he might be smart to get out of here and go like to somewhere with you know less extradition. I don't think he's gonna do that. I don't think Biden. Wants that, and I also don't think. I mean, I, I don't think they're going to do that. I think that I think he decompresses, yeah, sobers up, not from booze. He doesn't drink or any of that, but I think sobers up from the idea. Like, he'll probably move like, permanently to Mar-a-Lago. I think he'll move permanently to Mar-a-Lago. I think what'll kill him is not going to those rallies. I think those rallies were everything. They were. He the never had that before. He never had those rallies. You know, he's like, it, it seemed like he was always a grifter and like a, a cult He of became a god, yeah. Yeah, but he never had the like uh, in person, like fucking, like the crowd. Well, like, he never became a god. And you know, me and you touched on this years ago. The, the greatest thing about Trump, I think, or the, the magic was mm. the implausible becoming the plausible. Right. The idea that he was winning, the idea yeah. that he won, the idea that he was the president. It's a fairy uh, tale. Right, it's a fairy tale. It's an American fairy tale, right? Now, when a guy like him is not the president, yeah, it's almost like, what are we doing? You know, right. it, it, you seem more and more like a crank, and it's not fun yeah. because the crank is no longer the president. Like, you're just a guy yelling. Oh, yeah. And, and people are kind of going to be like, how are we going to be invested in this? Because there's, you know... Well, like, I don't think he does Trump TV. I no. don't think he does. He does think he's running in 2024. He does think that. He's he not thinks, gonna, but he, he does. He thinks it now. I mean, like, it, he'll probably be dead by then. Like, right. he's, look, he, I really do feel like he, he, what's keeping him going is, like, adrenaline and, like, he's taking a lot of bad role, allegedly. Uh, and, look, I'm just saying, like, he doesn't seem, if Troy, if Troy, we've always remarked how, like, these, some of these guys, these deep state guys, always seem to live in the, and like, well, they eat the good food and they, and they take care of themselves. Right. They're good doctors. And then we have a guy like this who's just eating trash every day. <laughs> He's just taking drugs still. It's like, but maybe it's the greatest drug is narcissism. Like, yeah. we realize, maybe we realize that's the ultimate survival. Nobody wants to hear that. Right. But the ultimate survival mechanism is to just be a soulless narcissist for your entire life. <laughs> You know, like that's just, just gripping to life. That's the way to survive everything from COVID to fucking everything. But he's just gonna get, he's gonna get fatter, right? Uh, he's gonna play golf every day. Like it's not gonna be remarkable. He's just gonna play golf and get fat. Uh, Fire off a tweet every now and then. He'll probably tweet all the time. He'll probably be cranked out. Yeah, still. and people are gonna ignore him now. Yeah, it's yeah. just gonna be uh, like you, we're, we're gonna remark how we're gonna at one point say, "Wow, we underestimated how much damage he could still do." 
We'll have to say that at some point. Yeah, maybe. Because he will do. So, he will cause something <laughs> to happen. <laughs> something. I mean, maybe I don't know. I'm I will, I'm really wondering what's what's that still from? I don't. Like these I are my work them. makes me have them. The butcher shop I work at. Oh yeah. Has me have screensavers on my computer. I mean, I just don't know. But you know, Biden and Kamala, man. They're gonna. I mean, what? what they're gonna put people in jail? You think? Oh. <laughs> I don't know what they'll do. I think we're probably going to get into a war soon. We might I mean, need that. You know we need that. We're not getting out of this economic thing without a few little skirmishes. That's a, but here's the problem. We, we don't get out of it with war. That's the myth. And it's not, yeah. I'm not talking about the Henry Hazlitt, like, broken yeah. window fallacy. Yeah. That's a different thing. I'm talking about, we've had perpetual war for, like, 60 years now, 75 yeah. years. You don't get, like, it doesn't really juke the economy anymore. Like, it worked in World War II because we didn't have all the stuff. Right. We had to build it. Now we like we we keep well, building. It does juke the economy for certain sectors, right? Sort of. I mean, look. Here's the thing. You we have it's, it's kind of getting it backwards. The economy is set up in such a way where you have to fight wars every ten years or so just to deplete the stock pile so that you can the, the, these companies who run the economy this is what I can mean. buy new this ones. This is what I mean. We got you got to you got to play. Right, but that's just to keep the status quo. You got it's just, reverse. It's reverse. You got to play <laughs> to pay. It's not pay to play. You got to play to pay. And I think we got to play a little bit so we yeah. can pay later. I mean, I don't know, but that's just to keep that sector from imploding. That's yeah. not even to get it like going. How do you feel you'll get old? I thought about this the other day. Do you go to the woods? Do you, you know? I was thinking about this the other day, and I go, "How am I going to get old?" Well, I'm an eagle scout, so I'll go to the woods. I yeah. I, 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 do you ever think to yourself like getting a nice house in a wood? Like, how oh do you, sure, I would. Yeah. Love, I would love to have like an upstate New York or a, right. You know, somewhere like Vermont. I mean, it's a little cold. I mean, I prefer somewhere where it's super cold, but, you know. Me and Ben got to decide where we're going to go. If we're going to stay in L.A., go to Texas, wherever we're going to go. Texas could be nice. I mean, like, I, I'd like to start hunting. Yeah. Um, or just, you're just having, like. I would like to do more shit in nature. I would like to get out of, uh, like, I'm in New York for the last couple of days. Man, I love New York to death. But, like, I walk around the city and I go, there's no part of me that could even ever consider living here again. Sure. I when just you're look hunting, at, can you use? I look at these people running down the streets in coats and hat. I mean, I'm like, God, yeah, it's, it's whatever what? this was, it felt. Like, it, I'm done with this place in in every way. You can work as Omni Corp over the. <laughs> <fuck. Yeah. laughs> but when you're hunting out there in the Montana, can can you throw grenades at deer?s Yes, that seems fun. Yeah, I, I might want to do that. That's I would like. I would like to use a like a grenade launcher. Yeah, so we could kind of really get some cover, some ground. Can you shoot a deer with a potato gun? In the head, like, it would kill him probably, right? You know what potato gun is? I don't think there's much you can't do to a deer. I think if you want to fuck a deer to death, you could. I don't know if I have the uh, stamina for that. I need to. I think, dude, what if you went on Rogan and that's all you asked? Right? You're like, can you shoot a deer with a potato gun? Like, I don't think so, man. <laughs> what happened? I like, I don't know, man. You know, think about deers, man. You could hurt them, but they're very strong animals. And uh, what if I made it eat a rock? Would it die? We, the problem is you can't get near them, man. <laughs> can't get near them, man. It's very tough. So I don't bring Marshall into the woods because it's very hard, man. Can't get near right. them. Right. It's fascinating. Can't really get near them. So, I mean, I think what you would have to do. You set it on fire, maybe? Can you set a deer on fire? Well, there's definitely local laws <laughs> that will prevent that, man. Like, there's definitely laws that are, you know, specific to each region. They're going to prevent that activity because what they want to do is create... Um, you know, a kind of a, a safe environment for hunters to keep these animal populations thriving. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever been out there? Let in the me woods? ask you a question. <laughs> you're, you're incredibly fat, ma'am. <laughs> Have you ever thought of getting on a ketogenic diet, doing very high protein, low carb, low sugar, you know, start doing interval training, you know, kind of building muscle, doing a lot of cardio, heavy cardio, things like that? No, uh, <laughs> not really. <laughs> Now, let me ask you, when you go out in the woods and you see one of these deer, do you ever say, I hate this particular deer? I hate it. I want it to die. I think emotion is a huge problem when you're in that situation. And what you have to really do is remember uh, the mechanics of what you're doing. And I think anybody that gets too emotional, right. ma'am, it's a bad, that's a bad idea, ma'am. Because what really happens is it just clouds your... You think I can still do the show after I've done this imitation? It's not even a good imitation. <laughs> you think, you think, you think, you think, can I'm I do the show? <laughs> you think I'm allowed to do the show now? I don't know. Ray Comp, it's always great to have you on. We're going to try to do a New Year's live stream. You're still down to come oh, out? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We don't know how we're going to do it. We're trying to figure that out. It's difficult. 
Uh, we may just end up doing it on YouTube. Um, I think we'll probably do something like that. I think at this moment, I don't want to hit people over the head for more money right now because we just did merch and people supported that and I appreciate that. And people support us on Patreon all the time. Support Ray Comp on Patreon too. We'll put thank his, you. we'll put his links in the description of everything. Use the help, thank you. But I, I he does it. He's I'm sitting right now. He's he's a massive. It's not massive. It's a, a, it's a, it's a small I'm apartment. Kidding. Well, no one thought it was massive. No one thought I wasn't doing it. I'm not rich. Yeah. No one thought I wasn't doing it. Bad. <laughs> no one was like I knew it. Nobody thought you were living in the the, the money the the vault from Ducktales. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't reach the top. And drowning in the gold. Yeah, I was like you and Launchpad McQuacker doing backstroke <laughs> and gold coins. But uh, I think we might just do a YouTube, you know, two two and a half hour live stream on New Year's Eve, and then maybe we'll turn on some super chats. Maybe people could throw us some money. But I just I want to kind of g- give people a break. It's been a shitty year. It's been very hard. There's a lot of people out there that don't have money, and I just don't want. I don't want to, like, fucking ask people to pay. I think if people don't have any fucking money. And everything that we do in the future, by the way, is, like, even if we do do any of these live events with tickets, we're also going to have a situation where if you don't have the money, you can email and watch it for free. You know, which is the right thing. Which, you know, but, I mean, my, <laughs> my agent told me that. He goes, we got to, he goes, Sam Harris does it like this. We're like, his fans, if they can't afford it, there's an email. And I go, listen. <laughs> You know how many people are going to do that? Right. Yes. <laughs> I'm looking at you like, what, what are we doing here? My fans will do that for the sake of doing it. <laughs> They'll be like, yeah, doing some fake business. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think we're going to go that route of the last year. It's just too complex to, to get anything else ready. But I do think we're eventually going to start, you know, put together a platform where we can do, you know, ticketed events, kind of like Segura or Bird are doing, where we can do a three. The thing that I hate about YouTube is that we can't, stream what we want in terms of like we can't play clips from things can't mm-hmm. play any music or really clips from pop pop culture bullshit or any other youtube channel but i think on certain platforms you can do all of that stuff but it costs a lot of money to build out those platforms or whatever set them up so you do you know you charge people it is what it is people buy a ticket and then they get like a three hour no holds barred completely uncensored live stream where we could play any clip do anything, talk about it. And it makes a lot of sense. I just don't know if we're going to have that together by New Year's. I imagine we're not. So I imagine we're just going to kind of have to do it on YouTube and deal with the content restrictions. Can yeah, you, we should be playing anyway. What? We, ever play, we always say we're going to play clips, and then we play like a minute. Well, something. we could. I think it would be really fun to play certain shit. No, eventually we'll do it. But I'm saying like, we'll, we'll, we'll still be good without the clips. Oh, it'll be great without the What are you doing on New Year's Eve anyway, yeah. folks? Who are you going to watch? Oh, I was going to sign up for Tim and Ray, but... Uh, yeah. No, they can't play you know, the Bieber. What are you going to play? Uh, they can't play the Bieber. <laughs> Can you imagine we do have one fan? <laughs> it's like totally like, we always think of a great character as like high beast Chris Hedges. <laughs> like a guy that he's like our corporate overlords, but he loves sneakers. <laughs> like he's a high beast. He realizes everything's fucked and why. He's like the oligarchy and the plutocrats, but he just loves sneakers and hoodies. He's a fresh. Yeah, he, he's <laughs> fresh. He's like, I just look so goddamn fresh. <laughs> He's like, I know I'm, I'm, I'm serving the plutocrats and the oligarchs that have hollowed out all of our institutions, but I look so fresh. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, but what are you gonna do? Play the Dobrik puzzle on New Year's? You're gonna what? You're gonna? You're not going out. You're gonna need to fucking do we'll something just, cool. We'll just get some kid whose dad is no longer with us because of the Dobrik puzzle. <laughs> so what, was, what was your last memories of your dad? <laughs> he was was it playing the puzzle? <laughs> did, did your dad win? He didn't win, did he? <laughs> what was his last? He fired off one final tweet to Jeffree Star. <laughs> said, favorite diss is give me money. <laughs> Dude, should I start tweeting to Jeffree Star? Like, under dummy accounts, like, horrific things. <laughs> like, hi, Jeffree. I was raped when I was nine years old. <laughs> I've, the trauma of that has just made me unable to... You know, I worked at a factory. I lost my arm. Do I get a car? Oh, did you see if he'll give me five grand? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was ripped by a bunch of uh, animals, uh, literal deers. <laughs> 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 I mean, like, it's just funny because like, 
Jeffree Star looks at those things. He's like, yeah, I don't know. That doesn't really. But I think <laughs> it, it doesn't speak to me. Right. Your tragedy doesn't speak to me today. <laughs> Is he like a makeup guy? Yeah, they're all makeup guys. Everybody's a makeup guy. <clears throat> Everybody's selling fucking makeup, man. It's amazing. You know, we've talked about it on the show before. That I, this, I could use some makeup. Tell the people where they can find, if they want to find you and they haven't found you already. Which you is, need to listen to the Cump Podcast. You it's have become to. A, uh, a, a, it's getting a, a much bigger following. People are loving it. It's grown into something. It's, you know, it had a, a slightly rocky start, but it's grown into a really great, absurd. This is the point the judge goes, Sir, <laughs> there is a missing woman. There is a missing woman, and there's physical evidence connecting you to her disappearance. Listen, this podcast has become a linchpin <laughs> of satirical, sir. Once again, listen to me, the Comp Podcast. So tell them about Comp, and then our love is disgusting. Our love is disgusting. Also, I do with Lucy Steiner. There's something out, out out there like this. I mean, Tim's got a great thing going. It's true. But I it's do something not this. different. It's not but this. It's great. Yeah. Uh, also great. Um, but it's it's very funny. It's on different frequencies. Yeah, different great, goes, Tim's Tim's got a good thing going, but he doesn't have any love in his life. <laughs> So he doesn't. He can't even have love, even if it's disgusting. He doesn't have it. But uh, yeah, you sign up for the comp Patreon, uh, patreoncom slash Uh Go merch, to Twitter, merch, Instagram. I am a wine princess bitch. I am a wine princess bitch. Shirts available in crew sweatshirts and t-shirts, all that stuff. People yeah. love them. Get for your. I mean, it, it's it's a wine bottle with a machete, and it's just it's, your your wife loves it. Doesn't loves it. I, I should get her, her own shirt for that. Phenomenal. Uh, uh, <laughs> you should get her her own shirt. <laughs> What are you talking about? I'm saying, like, like, I don't want for bed. You're trying to fuck his wife. <laughs> <laughs> she has a shirt. What are you saying? I should get her own shirt. You keep your hands off his woman. Well, I don't know if like, she wants a more form fitting. Like... Uh, yeah. Uh, will you leave her form out? What? Wait, wait, listen, I should form? come over your house. Let me, f- let me measure her. Listen, would your wife shit on me? <laughs> Maybe she should poop on me. <laughs> So, you know, Twitter, Instagram, at Ray Kump. Uh, yeah, you know, there's a whole world of Kump out there. Come join. Come join the world of Kump. Yeah, I mean, what do we have to plug, Ben? Do we have anything? Patreon.com, the Tim Dillon Show, for uh, additional bonus content. Uh, uh, the merch is closed. We appreciate that. We'll be back in maybe the spring. We'll do a drop. We have some cool ideas, cool designs, shit like that. New studio being designed. We do apologize that this is another non-video episode. Our next episode will be video from our new studio. Will our sign be ready? Yes, it will. So we'll, we'll, that's going to be a new episode from our new studio. Very excited about that. It was just built and designed. And this is our episode from New York City with Ray Kump in Brooklyn. Parting thoughts, closing words. What are you telling people? The holidays are coming up. Right. You'll be around for New Year's. You could give them some thoughts on that. But, I mean, for the, for the Christmas holiday, what, 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 what are you telling the people for the Hanukkah and the Kwanzaa? You stop looking for meaning in corporate entertainment and, 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 and corporate sex. You know, these corporate models. Find someone who will touch you. Willingly, uh, and just you know, caress them and sing to them. Let them sing to you. Uh, like, and buy, you know, buy shirts. This sure. is beautiful. Buy merch if you want, if that fulfills you. But just find out who you are at your core, and then just you know, as, as gross as it may be, you don't have. There is, there's no more. The patina is gone. You don't have, like, have to hold yourself to us. There's no Don Draper. There's no Tom Cruise. You know, he, Tom Cruise is screaming at some guy because he's, you know, not wearing a mask on, on the set of Mission Impossible. Just be who you are. Eat right. buffalo wings, you know, yell at your kid, uh, and just, you know, like, love your wife, love your husband, who gives a shit? Were you instructed, descended to answer the question when he saw, when he last saw the victim alive? When did he last see the victim alive? He can stop all the talk about the patina and everything going on. When did you last see the victim alive? Was she in your car? <laughs> Vice of counsel on the Fifth Amendment. <laughs> but then you just start going right back to me. Yeah. Like, who we are is so important. Francis Scott Key once said. You know, it's interesting. We've never been to jail. I've never been to jail. Like, I've never gone to prison. Uh, like uh, you as a prisoner, you mean? You're just been yeah, I've never jail. been in. No, I've been in a jail. I've been in a cell because right. the license, by the license. But like, it's got to be something interesting about doing a doing time in prison. Oh, I don't no, want yeah. to. I don't want to do it. 
I mean, I've had like I spent you know a day, a, you know, the better part of a day in prison or jail, and you you get a taste of that. I don't not, not, It's just it's kind of crazy how it's something where. Like you spend your whole life thinking of it. It's, it's something that's always in your head, even though like we like privilege and all that, we didn't have to. But like it's still it's, it's something that hangs over your head. And then when you're actually there, though, there's something about the like the tedium of that day. It's like oh, this must be the worst thing in the world for like for, you know two years if you're there for you know. Prison's bad. Is my point. Is it? <laughs> no, I know. I don't know where I was going with that. I'm just I just try to like to work out ideas, and I thought maybe. I just can't wait. You think maybe you'd like to go to prison? Is that your point? No, I just think that like white women will eventually start going on vacations to prisons. Like they'll make <laughs> Angola into like a bed and breakfast, and the like people just have like they'll be eating it like you know you know I've talked about this before in the show, but like there's definitely gonna be a time when they like like that the the, the 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 electric chairs like people are doing selfies in it and like yeah. you know well, they did that in Alcatraz. Prison is yeah they did that absolutely. <laughs> prison is so weirdly inhumane. Obviously you need prisons. But, like, right. it's just one of these archaic things where, you know, it really does just destroy people. Oh, yeah, look, it's just, you you need them for a certain percentage of the population, which is a fraction of what it is now. Like, it's right. just, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's so obviously, like, it's, for, it's run for profit. It's run, like, you know, um, this lobbyist to keep certain laws in place to keep certain people into prison. It's not, it's not just the private prisons. It's just a whole, it's a, it's a huge racket. Um it's just another, you know, segment of the economy and the, and the government and the mil- like, like the military. Like, you know, it's like once the military industrial complex became a thing, then you had to find a reason to fight wars. And once the prison thing became, a, you had to find a reason to keep, you know, people in prison. It's just, you know, and like the the, the, the police uh, guard lobbies will like lobby against like, you know, pot smoking being legal. It's like, there's no even like. Yeah, there's no correlation other yeah. than you want more prisoners. Right. I love that. <laughs> the, 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 what is it? The corrections officers will be like, we want, yeah. we don't want poppy illegal. Right. Yeah. It's, like, it's, like, it's just literally like the only <laughs> argument you can make is like, well, there's going to be less co- uh, you know, jobs for us. It's just like when wow. the Pope, when every f- few years the Pope uh, sends people. Did you see the, the Pope Vatican. liked an Instagram? Like he liked some chick on OnlyFans or something, some Instagram. No, like Instagram. Did he? Yeah, and he got in trouble. Why for does it. he even have an actual like account? Oh no, dude, there's <laughs> something happened. The Pope uh, uses the Pope account. Unless it's a total fake story. The Pope liked a, 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 a girl on Instagram or something. There's probably honestly some dude who ha- runs the Pope's account who also has another thing on his phone and he flips the profile. Right. Because I'm just saying, I just don't imagine the Pope being allowed to use the Pope account. I don't Pope think the Pope dates women. Or you know, many, yeah, yeah. That Pope is, uh, there's so much about how good of a guy he is. That's the why. Pope, I think the Pope's like little huddy. <laughs> but the Pope, the, the Vatican would send. What if the little people... huddy started dating the Pope? Is that allowed? What We're going to such hell. Ben, what is it? Yeah, the Pope liked an OnlyFans bikini model's photo on Instagram. Yeah, the Pope liked an OnlyFans bikini fan. Yeah. I mean, one Instagram. I don't think the, the Pope is. By the way, here's what's crazy. That's the healthiest thing that's ever happened yeah. to the Catholic Church. Yeah. What's about to come out about the Pope? Yeah. The, the, How the, many? The, he's a heterosexual that likes women. Like, that's the, that's the healthiest thing the Catholic Church has ever had. Uh, this whole school is about to whistleblow on the Pope. All right. Yeah. Go like some, you know, Pamela Anderson porn. Yeah, yeah. Go like some. Yeah, imagine that, right? <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, uh, this Pope is involved in this horrible rape scandal <laughs> with this uh, girl's school in Sierra Leone. It's like, hey, man, just go like a couple of some gash on Instagram. You know what I love? I love Belladonna. Yeah. She really gapes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Throw him off the set. What's the Pope's name? Pope Francis. Pope Francis, you got to throw him off the set. <laughs> Go like Bella Thorne's <laughs> fucking bikini picture right now. <laughs> Throw them off the set so when these 19 kids come out and say they've witnessed you fucking sacrificing <laughs> their friends, you have a fucking alibi. Like the Pope's like, ah, I'm just a man trying to get my dick wet. <laughs> you know how it be. <laughs> you know how it be. His name is the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if that was the Pope's Instagram? Like, you know how it'd be. <laughs> this is it's just the Pope. Dude, what about Hype Beast Pope? He just starts coming out like bathing ape, like Pope clothes. He's like, man, he's like, listen. He's like, I believe in salvation. And then I put that fucking bathing ape hoodie on. And I just said to myself, like, the, dude, what a great 
futuristic novel where the Pope is just a hype beast walking around Los Angeles, <laughs> just drugged out of his head. Like that's like a brilliant novel that would win a Pulitzer. Like right. the Pope, like like two hundred years in the future, the Pope, or not even like 10, 10 years yeah. in the future. Yeah. Let me calm that down. Right. Four years in the future, <laughs> the Pope is a hype beast <laughs> who's just walking around Los Angeles, getting high with a cannabis company. Yeah. All right, everybody, thank you for listening. You guys are the best. We appreciate you, and have a great holiday. And play that Dobrik puzzle.